I thought we was dead in the water. The inbound pass was tipped, and it almost became a turnover. And it's Indiana ball, end of story. Johnson. This guy was a big time performer. The more responsibility given, the more he delivered. When he took the shot, all you could think about is it took like forever. <laughs> it's foul. Ah! There was just this moment of, wow, did this actually just happen? Have that whole crowd erupt at the same time. If you're a Nick fan and you don't get goosebumps, there's something wrong with you. To be able to do it here in Madison Square Garden, I know that defining moment will be in a lot of people's minds for a long time. It's fouled. It has been said that great moments are born from great opportunity. In the 1999 NBA Eastern Conference Finals, Knicks forward Larry Johnson and more than 19,000 Knicks fans would come together to seize just such an opportunity. After a lockout shortened season of change that saw trusted players go and new stars come in their place, and a furious regular season finish just to qualify for the playoff. The eighth seeded New York Knicks would advance to meet the number two seed Indiana Pacers with a trip to the NBA Finals on the line. On June 5th, 1999, with Patrick Ewing gone to a season ending injury and the team just 11.9 seconds away from losing a pivotal playoff game at home, Opportunity had indeed presented itself. What happened next will forever be known as the four-point play and a defining moment in the history of Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is a very special place to play in. Well, it's a big time atmosphere, a big time place to play. And you feel that once you walk through those doors. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. This is known as the Mecca of basketball, and, and you have to do something very special here. Drives right baseline, underneath and jams it with the left hand. There's a reason they call it the world's most famous arena most knowledgeable crowd, the most provocative crowd. Well, I always used to say I had the great pleasure of earning my living for 10 years on that uh, strip of hardwood in the middle of all these great fans. The crowd, the way the lighting is, but it really is the fans. Uh, I think the fans are what make it. Well, New York fans always say they're not fans, they're fanatics. You know, they get into the game no matter what it is. They're very vocal. They're stars. I feel that they understood the game. They applauded the pass that led to the pass that led to the basket. It wasn't just the basket. They understood what a team had to do to not only score, but to win. If you show them that you're willing to work and you show them that you're willing to do anything to get a team a victory, they'll love you for the rest of your life. Larry had a great game. He knew he had to have a great game. Patrick Ewing was hurt, so he had to pick up the scoring. That night, they needed him to score because no Patrick Ewing, and certainly that night he provided it. It's fouled and hit. It's fouled and hit. It was an unusual set of circumstances, obviously, the long lockout. It was a shortened year, and there were a lot of changes to that team. Camby and Sprewell coming to our team, Starks and Oakley going out. So you're really talking about two guys that 
had been the heart and soul of the team. For the Knicks to lose those kind of mainstays like Oakley and Starks, guys who were New York Knicks through and through, it was a tough adjustment. So it took a while for that team to kind of figure out what they were going to be. But they hit their stride once the playoffs started, and they really became a team. sweep coming to its conclusion and the Knicks are going back to the Eastern Conference Finals. They'll face the Indiana Pacers next. By the time we got to Indiana, coming off uh, the sweep of Atlanta, we felt good about ourselves. Welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. The New York Knicks, the eighth seed, making it to the Conference Finals. They started We thought we were a very strong team, and we thought that we could beat the Knicks. We knew we had prepared um, during that lockout season, and we just knew if we didn't get to the finals, everything else was, was failure. We didn't look at ourselves as an eight seed. I think if it would have been an 82-game season, you know, we would have been in a top four team, even with our injuries with Ewing and Spreewell and the newness of some of our guys. We had a good team. Time playoff starts, you don't think about other teams. You just think about your team, uh, try to focus on uh, what you want to accomplish, what you have to do. And we had the talent that year to win championships, so that's what our goal was going for. Jackson has it. Forces up a three over Childs. Short, rebounded by Ewing, and the Knicks have done it. The New York Knicks have stolen the home court advantage by winning game one at Market Square Arena. And the underdog, New York Knicks, the first eight-seeded team to make the conference finals, pull off the shocker in game one. In the playoffs in the NBA, you have to be able to win on other team's floor. You have to be able to win away from the house. I'm here, Marcus Camry, live report with Kurt Thomas. Kurt, what do you feel is important for game two tonight? Well, you know, as long as we keep our heads right, go out there with the right attitude, I believe we can come out with the win. I was in a very intense rivalry between the Pacers and the Knicks. The edginess, the competitiveness, the level of physicality, the trash talk. Al Trowick at Market Square Arena where the Knicks have instituted a new timeout policy. Here at Market Square they step away from the bench a good 10 feet. That's all because the fans that are right behind the bench have done their homework and gotten extremely personal. It was always a lot of hard fouling, a lot of people getting knocked down on the floor. And those series always came down to the end of the game. It was very few times that one team blew out another team in a series. Have to go the length of the floor, they're out of timeouts. Charlie Ward looks down the floor. It. Ewing has it, turns, he puts it up. No good, no good. Ewing had a chance to tie it. And the Knicks lose a heartbreaker in game two. And that's Ewing misses the long jumper off a baseball pass by Charlie Ward, uh, not knowing that he's also injured. Uh, obviously, that lockout year was difficult on him. Um, from a health standpoint, he was never right. And it culminated with him being injured and out for the year in that game two in Indiana. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden in Midtown Manhattan. Game three of the Eastern Conference Finals with the Pacers and the Knicks tied at one win apiece. Once we did come away with a split, we knew the third game here was critical. If they'd have got that win, then it took away our home court advantage. So third game after a split, third game was a big game. Well, we were in a great position. We were extremely confident. We were comfortable, uh, and things were going our way. Mark Jackson blows by Charlie Ward to lay it in. Here's Rick Smith. He got another one. He's still on fire. They outplayed us right from the start. It was really difficult. They were so big, so long. We just were really struggling. Perkins for three. Indiana in the midst of a 10-0 run on the New York Knicks. Larry had a great game. He knew he had to have a great game. Patrick Ewing was hurt. So he had to pick up the scoring. That night, they needed him to score because no Patrick Ewing. And certainly that night, he provided it. Johnson for three. Johnson and one. He was phenomenal from start to finish. You know, this guy was a big time performer. And 
the more responsibility given, the more he delivered. LJ, <laughs> and he banks in the three. Larry Johnson is keeping him in the game. Biggest thing here is possession if the free throw is missed. Got a lot of time to set a play. Indiana five for five at the free throw line, fourth quarter. And now six for six, the lead is three. New York takes a timeout, 11.9 seconds showing on the clock. I thought we was dead in the water. We were up by three points. So I remember sitting in my seat looking at it and saying, okay, well, we can't lose this game. We knew we needed a bucket, so you either take the three or you take the quick deuce and you foul, and then you play it again. The strategy then was to foul and hopefully miss a free throw or two free throws, and then we had to call a timeout, get the rebound, and we had a shot to win it at the end. 91-88 with 11.9 seconds left, and New York will have the ball. Patrick Ewing can only watch from the bench with his injury. And is it time to go for three? Time to take the quick first available score. I think you have to take the first available score. I can remember coming out of the huddle and we had discussions. It was back and forth dialogue coming out. Uh, the decision was made how we was going to defend it. Charlie Ward was inbounding our best inbounder by far. The first option was Allen. We had a pretty standard play that we would run. Um, they did a good job. They took me and Spreewell out of a route that we normally take. Well, the play was for Allen Houston. We drew up a play for Allen. I believe I was the biggest guy on the floor at the time. And LJ was just very perceptive. And he came and he made himself available for the play. And at that point, we were so spread out that his instincts took over. And there was just this moment of, wow. You know, did this, did this actually just happen? It's fouled. Ah! It's fouled. Ah! 91-88, 11.9. Nixon advanced the ball. The inbound pass was tipped. And it almost became a turnover. But Johnson was still able to secure the ball, maybe another quarter of an inch on the fingertips of the pacer. And it's Indiana ball, end of story. Because of that, Larry was kind of out of position where he wanted to be. And he didn't start the play right away. It was almost like, I mean, it was only, a, I know, a couple of seconds, but it seemed like it was a couple of minutes before he made his move. I knew I had a bigger guy on me, and I knew that I could go past uh, Antonio, I just knew I had the advantage as far as quickness there. I, it was just a good matchup for us. I know I'm a little bit taller than him, so the one thing I don't want to do is I'm not going to jump. Uh, I know he's a phenomenal player. He's quick and crafty with the basketball. He can put it on the floor. Uh, and I knew that he wasn't a, a great three-point shooter. By catching it outside the three-point line, I could give him a couple of jabs, a couple of head fakes. To me, he was just on skates. I mean, he was, he was out, out of his element trying to guard me that far out away from the basket. You put it on the floor, um, slide my feet. There is some contact. I, I regather get back in front of him. I see Larry get the ball, I see him fake, and I see Tony kind of react to it, but I didn't think he really fouled him. After I see him raise up to shoot the ball, I stand straight up. I know that I'm not touching his arm, touching any part of his body, but I am concerned with that first bump. Ninety-one, eighty-eight, eleven point nine. Knicks have advanced the ball to midcourt. Charlie Ward will trigger the ball inbounds. It's Ward, Childs, Sprewell, Houston, and Larry Johnson back in. Ward had it tipped. Johnson made a good catch. Johnson. When he took the shot, all you could think about is it took like forever. <laughs> and that ball was in the air so long, and while the ball is in the air, the whistle goes. So now, in your head, you're saying, okay, the worst that can happen now is he'll get three free throws. 
and, and we'll have a chance to tie the game. So I'm thinking, okay, he's, he's gonna get three shots, which is awful um, because he makes all three were tied up. So I'm, I'm just disappointed at, at that, but at least he has to go to the line and, and earn them. Whistle goes, okay, LJ's gonna shoot free throws, we can tie the game, okay, great. And then it goes in. It goes in. Johnson is fouled and... When I saw just Kersey count the basket and give him the foul, I, I'm really in disbelief. And my reaction was somebody just shot my dog right in front of me. I mean, that's how I felt. It was disbelief. And there was just this moment of, wow, you know, did this, did this actually just happen? It's almost as if I was there and I missed it because I didn't even hear the eruption. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Um, I literally was looking at him in disbelief, waiting for him to you know, start calling the other referees over and having a discussion. Uh, and he just kind of looked at me like he knew that he made the right call. What you just witnessed was somebody getting off the canvas when they just took the, the biggest overhand right. It was over. But somehow, they're back in the game, and not just back in the game, in a position to take the lead. And at that point, I'm looking at the bench. I'm just looking around like, Oh my God, just in disbelief. Cuts left, now fires a three, and it's good! And he's fouled! It counts, and he is fouled! To be able to do it here in Madison Square Garden, just a defining moment for myself, and with all of the people here in New York and Knicks fans, I know it, I, that defining moment would be in a lot of people's minds for a long time. It's fine. have that whole crowd, the 19,000 plus, erupt at the same time. If you're a Knicks fan and you don't get goosebumps, there's something wrong with you. You have this shot that lifted, literally it seemed like it lifted the garden off the ground. And immediately, you have to kind of shut that down. Not only an individual, but as a team. I just remember seeing him and gesturing, let me get myself together, so I kind of wanted to leave him alone. As soon as he turns around and this building is going crazy, Chris Childs runs up to him. You can see the words coming out, you know, letting him know exactly what, what Larry's thinking is, it's great, game's tied, but if we want to win, I've got to hit this free throw. It was like dual emotions going on. You, you were so excited that he made the shot, but immediately, and we had to be composed with him and for him. At that point, how many free throws have I been shot throughout my career? You know, a free throw is a free throw. Nothing has changed other than this is for a four-point play and this is to win the ball game. Game's a long way from being over. Got it. New York by one. Timeout. There are devastating shots, and then there are crushing shots. And the fact that he got fouled and they took the lead was obviously a crusher for them. 5.7 seconds left. Can Reggie Miller pull out another one at the Garden? Here's yeah. Mark Jackson. Jackson, triple team, tied up, got a shot up, no good. New York wins. You think you're gonna win the game, and then like a second later, you lose the game. You know, you, you just wanna go home and cry. <laughs> A play like that kind of makes you think there's something magical going on here. Anytime I see it and you see the entire building stand up all at once as the whistle blows and the ball goes through the hoop, you still get a tingle when you see it. Johnson. It's fouled. Larry just made a, an all-time great play. 
What I will say is, you gotta be ready for your moment. It will go down as history as one of the, uh, one of the greatest uh, moments in, in, in Madison Square Garden history. There might be some crowd reactions and loud roars, might be as loud as that one, but there'll never be one louder because I don't think it's humanly possible for a crowd that size to cheer any louder after a play. Cuts left, now fires a three, and it's good, and he's fouled, it's tough, and he is fouled. Be able to do it here in Madison Square Garden, just a defining moment for myself and with all of the people here in New York and Knicks fans, I know that defining moment would be in a lot of people's minds for a long time. The Defining Moments exhibits, displaying memorabilia from the pinnacle events in Madison Square Garden's illustrious history. June 5th, 1999. With the Knicks down by three in the waning moments of game three of the 1999 Eastern Conference Finals, Larry Johnson is fouled while sinking a three-point shot. Johnson's free throw gave New York a 92-91 win over the Indiana Pacers and helped advance the Knicks to the NBA Finals. Memorabilia on display includes Larry Johnson's signed jersey and sneakers, the commemorative plaque given to season subscribers, and the original Knicks coach's preparation book for the Pacers series. Defining Moments, presented by SAP.